Hi, my name is Kyle Schilling. I'm a member of Music City Trikes, the Middle Tennessee chapter of National Ambux. And I find it's helpful to have a video to uh, help with any instructions or how-tos or put-togethers. And uh, so I thought I'd put together this video to show you how to uh, assemble a 1420XL. And this instruction uh, video will be pretty much the same thing for any 1416, 1420, or 1420XL. So here are a couple of versions of instructions that you may have in the bikes for the 1416, 1420, and 1420XL. Uh, nearly everything is identical between the bikes except for one component, that's the steering arm, which we'll go over. And if you actually open to this page, uh, you'll see all the components and the list of their names, and those are what we're going to go over now. Okay, so these are the tools that you'll need to build the 1416, 1420, and 1420XL. On the right here are the necessary tools, so you need metric Allen wrenches, and primarily you'll just need the 6, 5, 4, and 3 but getting a set is the easiest. You'll need a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, an adjustable wrench, and then some set of wrenches or sockets, primarily 16, 15, 14, and probably the 10. And then these are some uh, tools that you may need optionally depending on the accessories or some issues you may run into. So we've got a rubber mallet, a 12 millimeter wrench, and then a utility knife. So now we'll go over all the components of the trikes, the 1416, 1420, and 1420XL. So first, these are some of the miscellaneous uh, items that you'll get in the kit. There are three tools here, and those go with the bikes. There's a couple of zip ties or wire ties, the reflectors with their plugs, and a couple of extra wheel caps, which you may or may not need. And then this is the bike as a whole. So we've got the front wheel, obviously, front half of the frame which attaches to the back half and has a pin and a frame knob that work together. In the front there's a steering pin which we'll go over how to use. There's a steering stem, steering bar, there's a couple different versions of those and then there's a front brake that your bike may or may not have. And then moving backwards, we've got the pedals, right and left. The seat post, which adjusts front and back and up and down. This is one version of a seat that goes on the post. Seat back, there's a couple versions of this as well. And then this is the loading brake, which goes on the back of the trike. Rear wheels, which are identical, but they are, do have a direction, so we want to make sure we put them in the right direction. This is the rear steer bar, or parent steer. And a basket, which has one bolt. And then continuing forward, this whole assembly right here, all these components go into the rear steer brake kit, or parent steer. We've got the rear pedal leveler kit. And then this is the steering bar, which on the 1420XL is two pieces and goes together. On the 1416 and 1420, it's just one piece. And that is virtually the only difference between the trikes. And then last, we have tow levelers. And your trike may or may not come with the tow leveler or the rear pedal leveler. All right, the first step we're gonna go over is the uh, frame assembly. So you'll need the two parts, the back and the front, as well as the steering, or the frame pin and the frame knob. And so you'll pick up the front half, and this piece actually comes with a couple of throwaway parts. So in the fork, you'll find this piece, that's the throwaway part, just helps for shipping. And then on the fork itself, there's a rubber, plasticky, a cap, and that's for the steering bar, so you can take both off right away. And then uh, with it set up like this, you want to make sure that the frame is set such that the 
back plate, the black plate, is upright. That means that this is uh, correctly upright. And then the frame will go into this just like it's ready to accept the wheel. So those two go together just like that, slide in. And sometimes you have to give a little encouragement uh, with a rubber hammer or something just to slide it forward a little bit. Sometimes the paint gets caught up a little bit, but usually they go in just fine. And then you'll take your pin and your frame knob, and the pin goes in from above and usually goes right in. Sometimes that needs a little encouragement too with that rubber mallet. And then the bottom frame knob goes in from below. And this is a special knob which you have to hold down the middle and then turn clockwise like any bolt, but depress it, pull it out, and then that allows you to continue going clockwise. Okay, this is the frame knob, and as you'll see, if you try and continue to tighten it, you'll hit the framework. So what they've done is make this uh, easily to pull out, and then you can continue rotating. So if you pull it all the way out, let it click back into place, then you can continue rotating to tighten it. The other little trick is to take a Phillips screwdriver, and you'll see the end of this has a Phillips head. You can hold that in, pull out on the knob, and then tighten away with the screwdriver. And that's a little handy trick to get it all the way in. Once you're done, you want to make sure that you tighten it by hand because you can tighten it more with your hand than you can with the screwdriver and you're done. Okay, next step is to put the wheels on, but before we do that, I want to point out something that you may come across, and we're going to correct that first. So out of the box, this chain is a little crooked, so there's something you want to check on every trike before you assemble everything. It's a whole lot easier. So as you can see, this chain is straight from the front, but then makes a jog over to the right, and the reason is because the sprocket is not aligned on the axle. So typically, you should see no gap between the sprocket and the axle. So what we're going to do is take a six millimeter Allen wrench and loosen that up. And usually it'll slide right over without too much effort. And once it's there, it should be much more aligned. It's a little hard to tell because it's plastic tubing, but now it's virtually straight up and down. And we'll come back and tighten up that Allen wrench Allen bolt as much as we can with the 6mm Allen wrench. Alright, we're going to attach the wheels now, and you'll see a back wheel and a front wheel. Should be two back wheels. Uh, the back wheels are just through. There's a hole straight through them, and the front wheel has a bolt to both sides. So we'll do the front one in a minute. So we've got two rear wheels, and like I said earlier, they are identical, but they do have a direction. So what we want to do is take that wheel and look at the arrow on the tread, and you want that arrow to point forward. So what that does is gives the rider a little more traction when they're going forward, which is what they should be doing most of the time, and also helps on hills a little bit. So the way we'll attach the wheel is to remove, if these are attached, the white cap, which has your nut inside it. So I'll show you how to get that off in a minute. There should be a washer, and then on the left wheel, there's a spacer. If your bike is going to be using a rear steer kit, that spacer can be set off to the side and you won't use it. If you are not using a rear brake kit, or steer kit, then you will need to keep that spacer in there. So now I'm going to attach a wheel that is not using the rear brake kit. So I want to make sure that you have the metal spacer and that goes onto the axle first. Then you'll take your wheel with the arrows pointing forward, slide that on, push it on all the way. Then you want to take your washer, put that on next, and then take your wheel nut and cap and turn it just part way. And we'll tighten it up in a minute. 
Then I'll take the other wheel, identical, make sure the arrows are going forward. Take off the wheel cap again and the washer as well. And then I'll slide this on. And in this case, there are three little posts that go into the three holes of the wheel. I'll reattach the washer and then put the wheel cap on just a little ways as well, not all the way, and you're done with the rear wheels. We're going to attach the rear brake slash steer kit. So you'll follow the same procedure as if you weren't to start off with. We'll move the wheel cap and it has a nut inside which will be important later. Remove the washer, set aside, and then there's a spacer that with the rear steer kit you won't use. So we'll set that off to the side and not use it for this trike. The reason we don't use it is the rear disc has the same length as that spacer and so we'll put that in place of the spacer. And this is your rear brake kit. You have the disc, you have a key or hot dog piece, you have a set screw, and then a three millimeter Allen wrench. So the first step is to take this key or hot dog and put it into the axle and you'll need to rotate that axle around until you see the keyway. Put your key in, should fit really easily. And then take your rear disc and you'll see a slot in the hole and you'll put that rear disc on such that the thicker part with the hole in it is towards the wheel. Slide it on and you might need to rotate it a little bit but get it on tight. Then we'll take our three millimeter set screw and Allen wrench, put it into the hole and tighten down until it gets snug. Then you want to give it a nice, real tight finishing tug, make sure it stays on, and then you're done. All right, we're going to do the front wheel. For this, you're going to need your 15 millimeter wrench. And typically, there will be a rubber band holding the two pieces of the brake together, so you need to remove that first. And then on this front wheel, you'll notice that on the bolt going through the axle, there are two nuts and a couple washers. So you'll want to loosen those up quite a ways. When you attach it to the bike, the washers go on the outside of the fork. So once again, we're going to make the, end, uh, the arrow of the tread point forward. Shift it on there, and then this is a little tricky sometimes just to make sure you get all the pieces lined up. But you'll want the washers on the outside. And then once it's in there, you want to make sure you tighten both sides, left and right, down equally. And from there, you'll use your 15 millimeter wrench to get it pretty snug. And in some cases, it will spin on you. So you want to make sure you just go back and forth or you use two 15 millimeter wrenches to make sure that you get it snug. And after you're done, you want to spin it, make sure you don't feel anything odd about it, and you should be good.